This is CCNP Pro, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a network that has 99.999% uptime, or the famous five nines. Now, how do you get a network this reliable? I'm going to show you starting with the outside network here, and then I'm going to work my way into the core network, and then finally, we'll go over some of the switching setup. This is going to be a broad overview, so we're not going to get into commands or anything like that today. I'm just going to be showing you the general infrastructure setup and kind of how you want to lay out your architecture. All right, so it all starts out here with something called multi-homing. Multi-homing means you have two lines coming into the building. That's two internet lines. In the case of Caliper, the company that's nice enough to uh, provide this infrastructure today, and I uh, helped them set up their five nines for themselves. It's been working great so far. Uh, let's see, they have two internet providers, one above net, one pay tech, and you can see here they have different speeds for each because, you know, uh, the backup line doesn't have to be as fast as the main line here, that's fine. So they're using something called multi-homing. Now when two of the uh, connections come into the building here, they're actually going into two separate routers. Now both of these routers are owned by Caliper and they're running something called the BGP routing protocol. The BGP routing protocol allows them to talk back to the ISPs sharing what they know. Now you might say, why do you want to tell the ISP what you know? Well, if you have, say, web servers or something that has to be reachable from the outside web 24-7, you need to have a way to tell the ISPs that, hey, this line went down once, please use this path. So BGP allows that to happen. So in the case of Caliper, what they have is a Class C network. It's a 208 dot network. And what they do is both routers, the router up here and the router down here, run BGP. And they both advertise out this 208 network range to both ISPs. That way, these ISPs can propagate it you know, throughout the internet, share it with everybody. Hey, I know how to get to this 208 network. Hey, I know how to get to 208. And that way everyone coming in knows where they're coming. But let's say that AboveNet happens to go down one day and there's no way to get around it. Well, in that case, you're going to have to tell everybody to go through Paytech, which is the second internet line coming in. And if you're running BGP, and you already told everyone, hey, I know two ways out, then they don't have to uh, take spend any time figuring that out. They can go ahead and route everything right through the Paytech line. Let me get rid of some of my scribblies here. And so BGP lets us accomplish that. And what we're calling this is BGP multi-homing. BGP protocol, multi-homing two ISPs. All right, so now let's say that AboveNet went down again. But this router is still taking a majority of the traffic. He's still getting traffic all from inside the network. And he says, hey, my line's down. I don't know what to do. How do I get this out? Well, that's when something called IBGP comes in. And what IPGP does is allows these two routers to communicate together to share what they know about the network. So this guy says, hey, these routes are all gone. I don't know how to get out here. But this guy goes, hey, I know a way to get out. I can take this Paytech line. They're still giving me routes. They're still telling me all about their BGP table. And so what this guy will do is flow all the network data down to the second router and out to the internet, keeping that five nines of reliability. Now this flip happens pretty quick. It's all automated because it's all running through the BGP protocol, which is dynamic and it cleans everything up pretty quick and allows you to get that first router back online before there's any kind of big problems. Okay, so I think that covers the BGP and outside network and how that works. Now remember this is a very broad overview. This isn't detailed in any way. This is just giving you an idea of how you want to design your infrastructure. Alright, so next we're going to look at the core network and how that interacts with the outside network to get us that 5.9's reliability. Now the core network consists of a couple of switches in a switch stack, I'll be explaining that in a minute, and two firewalls 
In this case, we're using Cisco ASA devices. And what happens with these two devices is that you have one here, you have a second one, and they have a cable connecting the two, and then you have a primary, and you have a secondary. So, what does that all mean? That means that both of them connect out to these routers, but only one is active at a time. In this case, the primary is active. So the primary is passing all the traffic out to these two routers here. He's doing everything. The secondary is just waiting for this primary to fail or this link to fail. If one of these links fail, the secondary says, hey, something's wrong here. I'm taking control. And that allows one point here, because this looks like it might be one point of failure. So that's one point to stay redundant and keep that reliability. Because they have two connections this way, two connections this way, and two pieces of hardware. Alright, so now you have your ASA talking to your BGP router on the outside here. And he's passing traffic, he's doing pretty well, but suddenly the line goes down. What does he do? How does he know to go this way? You ask yourself, well, he should just know how to go that way. N no, ASAs and routers don't work like that. They can't just figure it out on their own. You have to tell them how to do it. So in this case, we're going to use something called an SLA statement. What an SLA statement does is it sets up a little ping on this machine that says, hey, are you there? Hey, are you there? And that does that every one to two seconds in the case of Caliper, saying, hey, are you there? And as long as everything checks out, that line stays up, he's happy. But if that SLA statement gets a ping back that says, hey, are you there? And it gets no reply in that one to two seconds, he's going to say, hey, you're not here. I'm going to say you're down because you're not answering my replies. And he'll say, okay, my SLA says if that one's down, use my second line. And so the second line kicks in, and he'll keep trying. This first line keeps saying, hey, you there? Hey, you there? And finally, if that line does come back up, he'll go ahead and take back this control. And he'll say, okay, I'm going to use this first line again because it's good. Now the second line is more like just like a failover. So, you know, if this line goes down at any time and this line is always up, you have no problems. It'll alert you about it, but, you know, it's not a big deal because it's, it's passing traffic normally as it always would. And SLA statements are a pretty, pretty big deal when you're trying to get five nines because it allows you to just have that constant communication between devices that normally wouldn't be there and constantly ping back and forth. All right, so now that we have our ASAs and they're working in failover mode, that's the mode where you have your primary and your slave, or your secondary, as they call it. Let's go how the ASA works with this core switch stack. Now the core switch stack is kind of like the ASA in that there's multiple devices and they're all connected together like this. They're all strung together to make reliability better and so they can, you know, generally talk with each other. Now the difference is switches don't have a primary and a secondary in the same way the ASAs do. Switches are always working. All three of these are always passing traffic through and they're always sending it out. These guys don't just hang around for this primary to fail, they're always active. But hey, what if this primary does fail? What if something happens to him, he goes down, some kind of hardware failure? The secondary already has a line out and so it'll just continue passing traffic normally It'll make itself the primary. It'll say, hi, I'm in charge now because this guy went down. And everything will go pretty smoothly. You may take a little bit of performance because you lost a second line here, but your reliability stays up, and you never lose any internet connectivity, and neither do your clients coming into the network, which is the important part here. Everyone can still read us your web, dub, dub, dub web, and they don't know anything happened on the back end. It gives you time to fix it. All right, so what Caliper did here to keep everything redundant is they have their server switch stack. This is the stack where, you know, you have your, in this case, they have VMware servers. 
you got your storage network, you got your World Wide Web file server, and I don't think they drew this here, but there's actually two lines coming between these two, and it's the same case. So you have the three boxes over here for the server switch. Excuse my uh, bad switches here. And you have three boxes over here running the core stack. Now they're all interconnected, like so. So if you have one go down, you always have a backup line coming through. And that way that these guys don't really have to do too much. They just say, hey, this line's down. You know, we saw it go down. So we're just going to go ahead and use this second line only. And then when the first line comes back up, this guy says, hey, I'm back up now. They'll just tra tra pass traffic over both the lines. And that's how on the switching side of things and the core network calipers how it will have five nines of reliability. Now in their case they also went a little over the top and their host switch stack is the same way and that allows them they're going to see for all their users out in the user land there and they don't have to worry about failovers either. And so that's how you would get five nines of reliability on network infrastructure with multi-homing BGP, failover ASA devices, and using switch stacks, multiple connections, to keep your network running 24-7. I hope this helps you out, and I thank you.